Hey, Joe, your Pet Boys Tech here. Over the years, I've helped a lot of customers keep their vacations safe. Just a little prevention is always better than risking your trip. So stop by Pep Boys and save 50 bucks off any Wagner Premium Brake Service. And before you travel, we'll check your fluids and alignment, as well as rotate and fill your tires for free. Pep Boys uses the highest quality brands for the best prices around. You have my word. Offer through May 27th with mail-in rebate. Free services for rewards members. See restrictions at PepBoys.com. Blog Talk Radio. Hey, yo, this is Fleetwood from the Cotton Pickers. And right now, you're tuned in off the cuff radio, baby. I'm going to have a World premiere. DJ Ski, New Jersey Devil Exclusive. I'm pushing the Cadillac man, it's black man, and I'm a black man in the Cadillac man. See what I'm saying is, ain't no diamonds in the back. Diamonds on my neck, duh. diamonds on my neck, duh. diamonds on my neck. I'm so fresh, so clean, edge sharper than the game. So look at the soul of my air one, see what I've been through. Been through the struggle and drove through the fire. Kanye on the track, that nigga spitting through the wire. I spit that pain back. Every chorus need a choir, like fiends need suppliers, like Dayton's to the wires. I'm bold. Turn my music up and keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Man, we just rolling, rolling. Turn the music up, we just rolling, rolling. Let the windows down and keep rolling, rolling. Man, we just rolling, rolling. Picture me rolling, rolling. System on blast, just rolling, rolling. Put on the gas, we just rolling, rolling. Man, we just rolling, rolling. I got my back on the wall like a hustler, smoking like a muffler, waiting for the customer. I got that, that weight that they push up, stay for things can't wait for, enemies hate for me to make that cake or drive through the state for, P-H-X-A-Z is what I came for, rock my chain for, hook double game for, headed to the boot, shotgun in the range for, I can make change more, and my shit bang more, bitches screaming my name when I open them range doors, when my wrist was touching, ain't nobody no one, so tell them niggas, get your new rolling. Man, we just rolling, rolling. Turn the music up, we just rolling, rolling. Let the windows down and keep rolling, rolling. Man, we just rolling, rolling. Picture me rolling, rolling. System on blast, just rolling, rolling. Put on the gas, we just rolling, rolling. Man, we just rolling, rolling. Homie, I'm just rolling. Rolling, thinking about the past, they said I would never last, so even if you crash, keep rolling, rolling, and I got a stash spot, niggas is killing, so my stash spot got a stash spot, roll up the window, roll up the angle, blow it out the sun, share it with my chin, oh, my niggas in the grave, my niggas behind bars, man, it's too many of y'all, but y'all know who you are, gang bangers in the hood, and they shooting like stars, in the gang bangers, I know don't wear shoes with the stars, they tie bandanas, and they shooting out cars, so I had to Turn it around and start shooting out Man, we just rolling, rolling Turn the music up, we just rolling, rolling Let the windows down and keep rolling, rolling Man, we just rolling, rolling Picture me rolling, rolling System on blast, just rolling, rolling Put on the gas, we just rolling, rolling Man, we just rolling, rolling Yeah, yeah I'm a It's a black horse, it's a horse Down for show, I'm not soft. I blow your fucking top off. Niggas know I do dirt. I'm kicking up dust, putting in work. Niggas know how I get down for show, I'm not soft. 
I blow it in for you, which I bump. Niggas know I do yeah. dust. I'm kicking up dust, putting Let's in work. Let's get it in, yeah. I got the 38 Magnum, rolling in the Magnum, top down, I'm hot now, niggas tryna bag them, cops tryna harass them, dual exhaust, tailpipe, smoking like Snoop Dogg, full dough, cool dog, blow the fucking roof off, in the club, in the car, sang, bang, chain, hang, bitch, I'm a superstar, it ain't too nice, it's J.U. Ice, and bitches cry when they see me like the passion of Christ, my flow he call like Buster, staggering mic, and my niggas throw a Patron shot back at the fight, and that's word to easy, nigga pass me a light, I'm five mic, Plus one, and that's a class guy. I get niggas know how I get down for sure. I'm not soft. I blow your fucking top off. Niggas know I do dirt. I'm kicking up dust, putting in work. Niggas know how I get down for sure. I'm not soft. I blow it up for your top off. Niggas know I do dirt. I'm kicking up dust, putting in work. Yeah, I'm AC Zone, cooler than that AC on. Ask around, barbershops couldn't fade me home. Bitches think I'm young, holler when the maybe roam. And I'm coached like that nigga who put Jay-Z on. And by reasonable doubt, I'm the dopest nigga out. Ain't sold one record, and I'm the dopest nigga out. I used to bang Machiavelli at my grandma's house. And every rapper in the world hate me like Steve Stout. I got Gorilla Flow, Thriller Manila though, like Ali and Foreman. This is just a warning. Four or five in the air to give niggas a warning. Take two of these and call me in the morning Niggas know how I get down for sure I'm not soft I blow your fucking top off Niggas know I do dirt I'm kicking up dust, putting in work Niggas know how I get down for sure I'm not soft I blow it up for your top off Niggas know I do dirt I'm kicking up dust, putting in work Cleaning up hip-hop's mess is my job Nigga, I'm from Arizona where they say fuck, fuck hot rod be easy, nigga. Hear you talking all greasy, nigga. So feasy, nigga. Better believe me, nigga. You know my steezy, nigga. I have you stuck in the trap like Jeezy, nigga. Killing you was too easy, nigga. You a my space gangster. Profile look cheesy, nigga. Everything you got's mine. Believe me, nigga. I'm in your friends list. Stealing all your greasy, nigga. You can't see me, nigga. But when you see me, nigga. I'm throwing shit like Matt Lyon and this season, nigga. Niggas know how I get down for sure. I'm not soft. I blow your fucking top off Niggas know I do dirt I'm kicking up dust, putting in work Niggas know how I get down for sure I'm not soft I blow it up for your top off Niggas know I do dirt I'm kicking up dust, putting in work
up in the vibe We can hit the Ritz Carlton word to ply Introduce you to the team Put you on the lingo about a dollar and a drink Call a couple of your friends, baby, we got time Talk about these power moves, combine minds Combine dimes, combine grind As long as you know, lady, that ass mine I'm trying to build, chef a meal My cuddle buddy, Netflix and chill Buy what you're looking off, it's 42 And open your body and let it in the room Y'all, this your boy King Eric the Great, and you are now tuned in at the best show on Friday nights, Off the Cuff Radio. Let's get it. Before we get started, we got my man Richie Revens, aka Juice. He's going to be joining us shortly. I'm going to have my cohorts joining me shortly. Miss Chinchilla and Ella are the same, man. But in the meantime, I just want to let y'all know that the guest number is, call number is 619 924 the first caller will get the library of stack bundles, B-sides, guest appearances, mixtape tracks, all of that good stuff. So all you got to do is just call the number, and we'll put you on, and press 1. That's all it is to it. But in the meantime, what we're going to do, we're going to bring on my man of the hour, Mr. Richie Evans, a.k.a. Juice. What's going on with you, champion? What's happening, brother? Come on, baby. We out here working, just trying to make it make sense. Daddy, that's it, you know. Man, we appreciate you joining us, man. When we got the email that you want to be a part of this, I was like, it's a, it's, it would be a privilege. Oh, come on, man. It's love. You know what I mean? It's nothing but love, baby. It's nothing but love. You know, we, are, we all out here working. You feel me? So I'm with you. Yeah, man, and I can tell that it's been a while since we heard from you, man. Like, what's what's been going on in your world, man? Like, what's been happening with yeah. you? Yeah, man, you know, it's it's just been growth. You feel me? Um, you know, you know, I mean, you know, the ones who do know and the ones who don't know. My name is Richie Evans, aka Juice. Um, you know, I signed the game in Black Wall Street. You know, what I'm saying the big homie took me up under his wing, and you know, I had the opportunity to rock with him, go across the globe, and. You know, understand what it what it's like to create some classic music, but um, it comes a time when little monkey turn gorilla, where you, where, you, where you grow up. You feel me? And uh, mm-hmm. it just kind of you know, it just it just it just got to the point where you know he had so much uh, you know uh, contractual obligations with Fifty and, and the whole G Unit thing. You know, it kind of it kind of put a ceiling on on everybody else. So. You know, I kind of sat down with the big homie. I told him I had bigger dreams and aspirations, and I just wanted him to fall back and support the nigga while, while he went through what he was doing, and, 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 you know, he gave me the blessing. So got back in the lab, you know what I'm saying, cooked up a nice little summer record called Come and Talk to Me, which y'all just rocked out, which I appreciate. And now we about to drop some more records through the summer. You know what I mean? We're going to drop some more records through the summer and hit this road, baby. You know, we working. And you know what's, cra- what's crazy is, it's very rare people that can actually flip that Jodeci record because you know there's an old saying in this game that you got to leave classic records alone. But some right, way, somehow, right, you right. guys flipped this joint and it just sounded crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, you know what's even more crazy? I wasn't even going to touch it at first because, again, the same mindset. I was like, you know, classic records and classic records. But when, when we went in that night, you know what I mean? The energy was right and we just got to cooking. 
I was like, nah, that that, that mug right there is a hit. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta put that out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now you gonna have a video shot for it? Yeah, actually, man, we shoot the video in um, a week and a half. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and we about to we about to turn it up, man. Actually, and I got a I got a secret surprise we're trying to do right now. I got I got a remix dropping as well, and I got a I got a solid solid feature on there that, that's going to really uh, shock the world and you know turn it up a couple notches. So, you know, you know, you know, we out here cooking. That's what I'm talking about. That, that's people staying dedicated to the grind. Now hold on one yes, second. Sir. We have a seven five seven caller. Let me see who this is. This can, let me see who this cat is right here. Seven five seven, you on? We got Juice on the line. Big homie Eric Thomas from the A. Two up, two down. What's going on, Juice? How you doing? What is it, Keeping it high. What's going hey, what's on, y'all? What y'all doing? Man, man, we working, Daddy. How you, family? Good, man. Actually, um. It's good. It's actually great to see still out there. Matter of fact, um, in Instagram under the name under my name T Max NBA, I dropped you that old November 2006 Double XL joining the show and prove that you uh oh, you know that you right. did what they did. Yeah. Matter of fact, I sent that's one to love. Eric too. You know, man, that's what I'm love. That's love. We uh, like I said, man. You know, we we appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad the cats was able to follow somewhat of the journey to, to, to where I'm at now. Like I said, you know, you know, you know, the early years was just, you know, you know, a uh, little monkey turned gorilla. You grow up, you know what I'm saying? You start wanting a little bit more. And right now, I think I got all cylinders on deck, so I'm about to drop a lot of music, homie. So I, you know, appreciate you, hard body. Oh, definitely, definitely. I know, um, def- I know definitely what you are during the time that you were with him. I mean, a lot of heads, and I don't want to upend Eric by, you know, jacking his interviewer's seat right here. <laughs> so I want to ask you know, Eric. You know, it's interesting. No, it, what it is though. You- you the first caller, so you know you get that library of stack bundles in your inbox. I'm sending that to yeah. you. Well, I, pre- I appreciate it. Um, now a lot of people don't know about the situation and that when you initially had um when you were determined to get your demo to game and about how you knocked out one of his security guards to get the demo to him. You know, right. can you tell right. can you, yeah, can you can you tell the heads all about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, it wasn't really, you know, at that time, man, you know what I'm saying? I was in the lab cooking up, and my lady hit me and said that she was pregnant at the time. And it mm-hmm. just kind of threw me for a loop. And, you know, she was like, look, I don't know what you're going to do, but you better figure it out. I don't know if that music shit going to pan out. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? I know you on the streets, you know, you know, cooling with your partner and them, but, you know, you about to have a kid. So it kind of low-key put me in uh, overdrive, but I, I was kind of frustrated at the time because it, it was just a shocker. So I end up right. leaving the studio that night, and I end up going to the club, and I seen a Lambo out front, and I forgot that Swiss Beats was in town, and he had game in town with him working on the album. Okay. So I end up walking in, I walked in, and I seen him in the VIP, and I seen him at the bar. So I walked up, and his uh, security guard kind of stopped me, and I was like, "Hey, you know, all due respect, I was like, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to give game a diss." You know what I'm saying? Like I don't, I don't want no, no, no autograph or nothing. Just can I give him a disc? And he was like, you know what, partner? You know, how about I get his manager or somebody like, like that? So he grabbed his manager, but I told his manager too. I was like, listen, man, you know, I kind of done been here before. You know, I done gave it to a manager, gave it to an assistant, but it never got to the person that it needed to get to. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, uh, you know, you know, at that point, man, you know what I mean. Game ended up getting up and walking over to the bar. So when he got up, his management and his security guard had to move with him. So I ended up sliding in the VIP. I kind of, you know, I mean, waited a minute to kind of let let the shit die down. So when I walked up, I kind of tapped him on his back, and his security guard kind of like smacked my hand, and like grabbed it with authority. And it was just oh, you know, real life. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it was just real life out of like grown man emotion. Like, listen, homie, I'm a grown man. Don't put your hand on me. But as soon as he did it. As a reflex, I end up swinging and hitting him in the jaw. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know, everybody, everybody at that, everybody at that point was kind of like, you know, what I'm saying, everybody at that, at that, at that point was kind of like, you know, you know, cops come, grab me, muscle me up, everything. Like, what's going on? And I was like, listen, hold on, hold on. I go, listen, I just got a disc. I want to get a game. I was like, game. I just found out today, my dude, I'm about to have a child. Your man wanted me to give you the disc. I wasn't, I, I wasn't cool with that. 
if you know if if if, if you throw this away, I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? But I just want to know you you got it. So he took the disc, man, and they they held me right there for like a couple minutes until him and Swiss Beats walked out. Then the next day, man, I got a phone call and the plane ticket, and it was black wall ever since. That's what it is. That's what it is. And definitely, um, once you made, once you definitely got on, man, I think a lot of heads might remember too. Um, Eric might know about this too. The stop snitching, stop lying mixtape the game had done, where you had actually right. flipped the juice beat. You know, the Eric B. Right. and Rakim juice, know the ledge. And right. I mean, you just straight murdered it. Matter of fact, I still have that too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot y'all both a picture of that when I find it after I dig through the crates. But, uh, yeah. but I mean, your, um, I mean, the lyrical prowess, the control, the uh, ferocity in which you attack the mic, man. I mean. You know, Eric and Ella will tell you, you know, I I study a lot of the people that they they come on the show, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. Love, like I said, we, we, you know, that, that, that record right there, man, was something that, you know, actually, you know, I asked Game at the time, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, through my journey and process, man, I was, I was really just trying to study the arts of music. I remember when Mm -hmm. I, when I signed to him, I didn't really, you know, as soon as I signed to him, we end up jumping on the road literally like two weeks later, and we was in Europe for like two months. So uh, mm. I went. You know what I mean? He told me flat out. He was like, "Look, he gave me. I want to say he gave me a thousand dollars." He goes, "Yo, I want you to go to the store, and I want you to buy every hip hop classic album." So man, I went and I bought. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm, I'm talking about Eric B and Rock M, Nas, J, Big Pop, Ice Cube, Outkast. You know what I'm saying? Big L. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You know, West Side Connection, Dre, like anybody who was really a staple in this game, I bought all the music. Because he was like, look, you got a lot of downtime on your hands. So I got all them albums, bro. We on the headphones. And for the next two months when we was on tour, man, I, lo- I listened and, 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 and I studied every hip hop great and, and just tried to take a piece of that and try to create my own. Word, so word, that's how, word. That's how that, uh-huh. that's how that came, came about. Definitely, man. Um, I know. I know. Definitely coming from Arizona, um, it's you know, it's not always been considered to be the hip hop hotbed. Although there have been a lot of artists that come from there, you know. In addition right. to yourself, there was also Von right. Tell from back in the okay. day, um, and also Willie North Pole as well. You know. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. How did you? I mean, in terms of making your mark in it. You know, and also in R and B, I believe uh, CC Peniston as well came from Arizona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peniston, um, uh, Willie North Pole. You know, Fifty ended up signing a cat named Hot Rod out there as well. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you know the thing about Arizona that that I try to explain to to to, to a lot of people is that um, Arizona has the talent. We, it's mm-hmm. just not a major market, i.e., of like a L.A., of like a Atlanta, or like a Miami. The thing about it is, is, you know, since we're such, I mean, we, 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 we are a city, but we don't have the infrastructure that some of the other major cities got. The talent is here. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, Arizona's right. radio station exactly. follows the same, same formats as, you know, a power, you know, you know, in, 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 in L.A. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. we, we really didn't have the infrastructure and identity at that particular point. And with us being one of the first first ones to really you know get 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 put on the scene now it's been a lot better and we have a lot of resources and outside connects to really help you know get the city and state to where it needs to be well like i said man you definitely have led the charge and done you know the city so proud and whatnot i mean you're the wildcat you know to be you know hot like sun devils out there man so it's you like, already know <laughs> you already know you took it man just keep just keep doing it, man. Keep doing it. Appreciate, appreciate. Yeah, big shout out to you, man. I mean, I know it's been a minute ago. You know, we both been busy or whatnot, but you're gonna no have to contribute no to the doubt. show. We definitely appreciate it. Look, I'm glad I can contribute. I'm just, I'm just thankful to um, to be able to also kind of have an auxiliary seat as well. This is you and Ella's show, you know, and Candace as well. And I mean, y'all do a tremendous job in terms of uh, what you know. You're what the game's been missing in terms of genuine hip hop journalism with an unbiased, unfiltered, and 1,000 proof kind of uh, candor to 
to the airwaves. I mean, off the cuff is outstanding and always and, you know, has been and always will be the stuff, no matter what. Appreciate it. It's real. It's real. Yeah. You'll be able to definitely, man, look for that, look for that old library of stack bundles in your inbox after the show. Word. Stop Appreciate it, man. It. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you again. And you giveaways stay out here. Definitely, man, Juice keeps squeezing that, on him. Eric, stay excellent. Man, you already know, man. Hey, I you know, appreciate that love. Matter of fact, family, when you when you get a minute, shoot me a um a DM. I'm gonna make sure my uh team and my people send you a box of uh you know a hat. You know what I'm saying? Some some memorabilia and some uh, physical copies as well, champion. Appreciate that. Real life. Well, appreciate that. I'll, um, matter of fact, I just uh I checked out your Instagram today. Um, matter of fact, of course, I'll send you my address and everything, and we'll go from there. Thank you again so much. Off top, brother. Appreciate it. I appreciate you. Why? Yes, yes, indeed. You see, we here. We have a, another nine one eight caller. You see, we got here. Man, dude's got some fans out here. Nine one eight. Hey, shout out to the army right there. I was just speaking from Black Wall, man. I, I fucked with him, bro. I met him about four or something years ago. My big homie Eastwood, you feel me? He's on Black Wall, you feel me? And I linked up with him a while back, you know what I mean? So, that's right to him. He's still grinding and doing his shit, so. Yeah, man, you already know. Appreciate that. Shout out to the homeboy Eastwood, too. It's crazy. I just um talked to Eastwood last week when I was on the radio run out there in L.A., you know, he um he in that uh that, that new Tupac film. So, you know, shout out to Eastwood. But yeah, man, we work. I appreciate that love, champion. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Hey, fuck with me, bro. I got that link time to hit you in that DM place. We're gonna make something happen, dude. Off top, let me know. Yeah, yeah. Hey boy. Yeah, the cypher's built the cypher's cook it up tonight, man. So Going, going back, going back to your music, what we looking forward to? Right? Like, when are you plan on releasing this, the new album? I'm looking. Actually, I'm scheduled right now towards August. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, right now the whole "Come and Talk to Me" record for the ladies is really picking up. You know what I'm saying? I, I think I'm about to bubble right back and apply another record. You know what I mean? Somewhat for the streets and niggas out there getting to the money. And then I think after that, I'm gonna do one more, one more single, probably. The end of this, I mean, the uh, early, early uh, August, you know what I'm saying, leading up into the album, and then we're going to drop from there. But like I said, within the meantime, though, you know, people out there, make sure you log on to uh, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play. You know what I'm saying? We got the new Come and Talk to Me record, and I dropped an EP um, last year called The Process. I got features from, uh, you know, Shine, Shine Poe, you know what I'm saying? He was, he, he was always influential. I got a feature with Shine on there, and, and of course, I got the big homie game, so... You know, you know, just really trying to create some good bodies of work, man. You know what's cool though is that you able still to be able to keep cool in this industry because you know this is a pretty much dog eat dog business where you know beef just kick off Stop. anytime, anywhere. You never know, but Stop. somehow you may level headed with all everybody involved, even including game because you know how game get. He gets he gets round. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no, game. I mean, we didn't, we didn't been like, you know, quiet is kept, man. We didn't, we didn't been through a lot, like as far as a team. You know what I'm saying? You know, you got to understand at that particular time that I got brought to the camp. You know, beef was everywhere. You know, you know, the 50 Cent of G when this shit was at a height level. You know what I'm saying? You know, of course, you know what I mean. He had some, you know, some other, you know, beefs in the streets. But I mean, you know, that's that's kind of the kind of the, you know, role you kind of take on when you, you know, you know, necessarily sign up, you know what I'm saying, with, with somebody of that magnitude, you know what I'm saying, right. I mean, you know, again, I, I always give him, give him, you know, the big brother, the big, the big brother stamp, you know what I'm saying, because, you know, he always, you know what I'm saying, you know, you know, he brought me into a great, a great situation, but, you know, I mean, hey, I wrote it out, you know what I'm saying, I grew up a little bit, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and you know, taking it, take, taking a, a, a different approach. I mean, I've I've seen I've seen so much street shit that you know what I'm saying. It kind of eventually makes you just get get your shit in order so you can you know live and reap your blessings and benefits. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's just you know what I'm saying for me. You know what I mean? Like like listen, I'm trying to get to the bag and I'm trying to share my blessings with with, with my family and loved ones around. You know, I I, I done seen niggas lose their life and I done seen niggas lose a lot of money. You know what I mean with 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 the beef. You know, look at you know, look at stack bundles, i.e. for an example. Or you know, shout out to uh, Cheeks. 
life and, and, and shit like that. So, you know, I'm just trying to really, you know, you know, take a real, real solid approach to everything that's really kind of go on and try to be a visionary about this shit so I don't get caught up in the same hype that, you know, a lot of my peers and partners have been. You know what I mean? That's a fact. Because it's very easy, especially when you live it in this social media era. Like, any time, like, it could be a missed tweet or a missed yeah. message, anything will pop it off. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. For real on that. It's, it's, For real. It's crazy, but, you know, while we building on about what social media, you think it has a positive or a negative effect on the game versus when, when you came in? You know, honestly, like, it's funny because I had this conversation the other day, too. Like, you know... I'm one of them, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm arrogant when I need to, but I'm also just a low-key cool nigga who just kind of, you know, play the back. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't really too much that, you know what I'm saying, social media guy, but I also understood how social media is the new wave of business. You know what I'm saying? And it's kind of the new wave of, you know, reaching out to different markets and different people to, you know, listen to your product or get your product too. You know, I'm, I'm, me personally, I'm not a real big, big fan of social media because I come from a different era. Like I said, you know, I came from the era where niggas was jumping in the van, driving 12 hours away with the street team to post up and hand out CDs and, you know what I'm saying, really live and direct oh. in the field to, 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 to gain in a fan trenches. base. But, right, right, real life trenches, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you know, the, how can I say it, the... The, the future of it, of how social media is, you know what I'm saying? I think that, you know, it does make it a little bit easier, you know what I mean, on, on you know, people's brands. But also, man, you know what I mean? I think that you still do miss a certain attribute of being in the field. You know what I'm saying? I, I think yeah. I think not being, you know, not being in the field, I think it gives you, you know, I, I think that just that, 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 that whole real understanding of what it's, what it's like to be ten toes down out there and, and really making your dream happen. But you know, it is what it is, man. To each his own, you know? Different strokes for different folks. Yeah, real life. Hey, real man. Life. Now, I got my co host coming in. I think I got Candace, Miss Chinchilla. Ho, oh, she's coming on. We build it with the juice oh, right here, damn it. What it do? What it do? How you doing tonight? I'm good, baby. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm just listening to y'all top it up, giving out some good games, giving out real opinions. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Man, that's what it's all about right there, you feel me? That's all That's all we can do, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I'm loving, you know, I, I, I missed the first part of it, so I'm going to let y'all keep talking because I'm going to see if y'all answer some questions that I had or, or, or if y'all already answered some. So excuse me if I ask a question that y'all already spoke about it, but I'm going to just listen because I'm loving what y'all getting All up, all up. All right. I'll see, man. Now what? Now what? What the top five um, MC that inspire you to do what you do? Yeesh. <laughs> All right. So my favorite artist, you know what I'm saying, that really gave me the inspiration to start was Nas. I was a real, real solid Nas fan. Nas, Ice Cube, Game, Scarface. In the original DMX, like like before my man really got to tripping out, like <laughs> in the original DMX. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, nah, yeah, you know what I'm saying, you know X, you know, you know, you know the, you know, you know, like like the original X, you know what I'm saying, like but them them five to me was like kind of my entry level, you know, start of really really having that love and passion for the industry, you know what I mean? Like I said, I really listened a lot, Nas a lot, Game a lot. You know, Ice Cube a lot. You know what I'm saying? DMX, like, you know, Scarface as well. You know what I'm saying? They they, 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 they all kind of play the instrumental role in me chasing my dream. Um, you know, but I'm also a fan of, like, you know, T.I., of course. And I'm a real big fan of, um, uh, you know, Goody Mob and, 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 and who else? You know, uh, Pun. You know what I mean? Pun was, was nice with his. Um, you know, Kendrick Lamar, of course, that's my partner out there. Uh, my man Nipsey Hussle. So like I said, man, I got I got a real big range of music that I that I that I really rock, you know what I'm saying? From from, from all levels. So You know what's crazy is that you was you was actually working with Kendrick before he really became the Kendrick that we know. Yeah, yeah. Kendrick, um when I when I when I end up 
signing the game, when I when I flew out to Kendrick and J Rock was the first artist that I met when I landed in LA. Um, at that time, J Rock was signed to Warner Brothers, and I think Kendrick was just getting out of his deal with Def Jam. And you know what I'm saying? Like they was, you know, we 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 all was kind of around the same age, so. You know, with me moving in with game out there, like them, that, you know, them was kind of my, my my peers. You dig? So, uh, you know, we we got a chance to you know record a lot of music, man, and chop it up and hang out and you know just talk about our visions and goals. And then uh, my man just ended up taking completely off. Like my man ended up becoming the face of hip hop right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you know NBA commercials and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he really doing his thing, man, and it's a blessing because he really worked worked super, super hard at it, man. Like, you know, he really was humble and patient for, for his opportunity to come. You know, people don't don't really understand. You know, he was also an artist, but he also was a hype man for J Rock. You know what I'm saying? Before he was you know, you know, came into his own and, and found his voice. You know, once he did that, you know what I'm saying, my man my man is really out of here right now, man. You know, Grammys, platinum, you know, records, you know, NBA and, and you know, uh Reebok. Reebok deal, so he, you know, he on, man, he on. It's and it should be an inspiration because he's doing him. Facts, you know. I tell people all the time. I go, you know, that's one person who never negated away from being who he wanted to be. You know, sometimes in this industry, when you sign with certain people or, you know, what I'm saying, getting certain, you know, contractual obligations. You know, what I'm saying, people hold that financial burden up up over your head, and 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 kind of force you to conform to what they want you to do. But homie wasn't with it and you know, you know, it shows in his music. He's making the music he wanna make, you know what I'm saying? And and it's working for him. That goes to show you right there. You stay true to your style. Eventually the benefits will come. Off top. Off top. So with I got a question with with all of that being said, do you think I understand it's harder in a sense for independent rappers without the big labels behind them, but do you think it's a smart move these days with the game so saturated, or do you think people need to start off with a big label if they get the chance? Uh, my honest opinion is, I mean, both of them are, 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 are beneficial if you if you utilize them right. You know what I'm saying? I think at this particular point, if an artist can stay true to itself, create his fan base, you know what I'm saying, and touch these, these different markets, you know what I'm saying, he should stay independent because, like I said, there's really nobody to really put a cap on what you want to do, you know. The hardest thing about an independent artist and a signed artist is just that the independent artist doesn't have as many professional relationships or connects and the financial support that the other does. But the one who is signed to the major label has those resources, but he has more debt and more overhead in somebody that can dictate, you know what I'm saying, dictate to have him do, you know, maybe things he, he, he don't want to do. So, you know, right now, if you got the bag and, and you got the team, stay independent. That's what I would say. But And, and so, so... With that being said, when you talk about the distribution deals, if, if, do you think it's smart for if, if they can stay independent and get a distribution deal on a song or two and utilize that to break themselves out and see where it goes from there? Would that be a smart move for a, a first time or just breaking out artists? I mean, they can they can do that too. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think it, it, it all comes down to the art of the way that you, you negotiate the situation. You know, at, at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? I mean... I think that an artist should kind of do a little bit of groundwork and footwork for itself. So if they do end up getting into a situation or a debate with a major label, that they have the leeway to get what they want out of that situation. If it's just a new a new artist, you know what I'm saying, at the end of the day coming into one of these particular labels, 95% of the time the label is going to dictate exactly what they want to do for them because they're going to be investing so much money and, and so much time into them that they have to do the route that they know to guarantee their return back. But, I mean, I, I think now, man, with, like, social media and, and, and radio shows such as yourself and, 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 you know, other platforms, I think that there's many different ways where new artists can come in and put them put themselves in the beneficial uh, 
deals with, you know, other labels if, if that's what they choose to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the beautiful part have- about the online presence is you could you could check out a lot of the potholes so that way you won't make many of the mistakes that many artists that we grew up listening to have made. Like those exactly. the addition contracts, they were a bitch, man. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, mean, you know what I'm saying? I watched the movie twice, so I get it. Yeah, that's that's a a lot of artists out there. Uh, Yeah, a lot of artists ask me questions, and and I always speak what I what's common sense to me. But that's why I like asking people like you that that has experience in the game from before and now, knowing how the game changes, because you always give a good perspective. Because I know I've I've been asked too: Is there room for, for growth still? And, and making your own type of situation that, you know, is not really something that everybody has done before. And, and, and I tell them always, yes, go after, you know, if you think you have a strategy that can work for you, you know, do it. So that's why I ask people like you certain things because at the end of the day, I know there's always room for growth. We see it in social media sure. and everything else. So that's, that's definitely good information. You see Nah, nah, and you know sure. what opened up the door about oh, Go ahead bro Go ahead No, I, I, I was going to say right quick I was like you know I always tell people too man Like you know Because one avenue worked for somebody Necessarily doesn't mean it won't work for you You know what I'm saying Or will work for you You know like when I when I initially got into the whole You know, you know contract with game You know One of the reasons why I stepped back a little bit Was because everybody wanted me to take the same approach as he did Because he you know his his group worked. You know what I'm saying? You know, he wanted to beef all the time and riff with niggas and you know, that that was just kinda who he was, you know what I'm saying? Nah, I'm the nigga trying to get money cooler in the back, sipping a little cognac, really trying to find me a Nike deal or two. You know what I'm saying? Two different mindsets. So, you know, you know, you know, I tell people all the time, man, you know, you just gotta really figure out the lane that fits best for you. Just because your man did something necessarily doesn't mean that's gonna work for you. That's I E the same reason why I commend Kendrick so much because, you know, J Rock was more of the street urban appeal type of artist, you know what I'm saying? But Kendrick was more soulful and more, you know, you know, more uh, worldly with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you know, his music is kind of touching a lot of different people more than just the street. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Uh, we can dig that. I mean, that's what it goes it goes staying true to who you are. Right. Right. Yeah, going back, and that's that's another thing as far as people asking how you cut that political red tape with all the radio stations and with all the corporate situations they get in, and, and that could help too. If if like you said, if you if what works for everybody else doesn't work for you, and if if you can cut through that red tape in politics in a different way, then you know you let that that be somebody else's mission strategy, and they build upon that, and they that's how new strategies become and and, and start growing themselves so I always try and tell artists you know you can take a little bit of strategy from somebody else's playing a blueprint but at the end of the day if you can tweak it to make it yours and make it work then you have people that get to learn from you and, and, and build upon what you do and tweak it their way and that's how I think the industry grows and grows for the better and we, we right. still have the the artists that are lyricists and that, you know, they, they put their passion behind it and you can hear it and we have stories to tell still coming out in hip-hop because right now, you just like the, the stuff coming out now, people don't even have stories to tell, but that's their niche. They broke into the game somehow and, and they right. have fans. I may not be a fan of it, but I know they have fans and so I don't turn my, my way around from them, but at the end of the day, you know, it's not something I'll tell them I don't damn it, but I know you got followers that do, so keep doing what you do. But, you know, they do have lyricists these days that get to still build upon the, the legends of the game. So it's, it's always lovely to see people take their own initiative and, and see plans and make it happen to them. So somebody else will pave the way for somebody else in that fashion. Yeah, that's true. Cool. Well, you know, well, you know what? We're coming away with a, with a major label and everything. You get perks. Like, you get access yeah. to the nicest cars, and you get the gorgeous yeah. women and the biggest homes. And I want to, and you all, then you get to tour a lot. Like, what was the, some of the craziest yeah. tour situations you ever seen? 
You know, you know the thing about you know game that, that I say is this touring regiment is super big overseas. So you know, I mean, one of the biggest you know what I'm saying things that I took I, I took away from that was I got to really get outside of my own confines and really see the world for what it was. Like you know what I'm saying? There's 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 more to this music than just making music for the niggas that's sitting on your block, or you know what I'm saying in your six block radius. You know what I'm saying? There's there's a, there's a whole nother avenue out there and you know it was it was just super it was super big it was it was just super dope to know that you know i mean there was people out there in london and australia who really want to hear your story who really want to see your vision and see where you come from and know about who you are as a person you know what i'm saying and um you know going over there and, and, and having them you know recite your lyrics word for word you know what i'm saying really really does something to 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 a person's spirit you know what i'm saying it kind of you know it, it motivates you in like a whole nother level you know what I'm saying? To want to keep, you know, keep pressing on. But, you know, the, um, the, you know, you know, the, 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 the road life is, is something you got to just really be, you know, prepared for, man. You got to keep yourself, you know, um, you know, healthy on the road. You know what I'm saying? You got to really have a real, you know, you know, solid regimen. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you, you, you're doing 12 hour plane rides and 12 hour bus rides from the next city to the next city. And you got to, you know, you got, you got to show it at, at, you know, 11 p.m. at night, and you got to turn around and wake up at five o'clock to do to, to do to do a radio show. It's all just an ex- experience, you know what I'm saying, of where of where you're trying to go and, 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 and what type of level of uh, success you're trying to hit. So it was a blessing, bro. Real life. And I'm glad you said that. Kind of. I'm sorry. I, I'm glad you kind of touched on the, the keeping healthy and all of that. I know they have a lot of people that. I always say, you know, you're not going to get no sleep, man. You're going to drink up, pull up, get fucked up. Right. But at the end of the day, it, the, your body is a, is a human body. And, you know, you do need rest when you can. I understand you can't always get it on the road. And it's always right. not so comfortable. But, uh, but right. I tell my artists all the time, stay hydrated, stay fed. Yep. You can and yep. don't get too fucked up because you're going to end up being fucked up for real. Well, shit, like I said, you know, all that, all that comes with with experience. Like I said, I mean, I've I've witnessed all levels of it. I remember the first the first two weeks I was on the road. Oh my God, I'm drinking, handy out the bottle all on stage. I'm doing all the real nigga shit. Next thing you know, my body shut completely down. <laughs> you mm. feel me? So I had to, you know, you know, at that point, I'm like, listen, bro, how you gonna be out on this road, man down? You know what I'm saying? That does nothing for you, but you know what I'm saying? Take money out of your pocket, and plus, it's not—it's not a good, healthy look to the people that you're trying to uh, turn to be your day-to-day support. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like this is like, like, like one of the first times people get to see you up close and personal. You better put on a show, boy. You better get right. You know what I'm saying? So, trust me, all that was a, was a, was a real life lesson. You know what I mean for myself. You know, now I got a different regiment. I make sure I get my sleep. I make sure I drink enough water. I mean, don't get me wrong. I still take a couple shots of tequila and Hennessy here and there to get the, you know, to get the vibe right. But you know, I'm a little bit more mature and a little bit more educated how this thing works. So, you know, I got a, I got, I got a whole different regimen. So anybody out there who on the road, stay healthy. Huh. Okay, so uh, that's what we, we do it all the way. We give health tips. Ha! Huh, yeah. We keep you healthy, mother. And people <laughs> also got a real long. If, if you're giving a good show, and I mean a great show, and you your energy is up, that takes a lot from your body. You know what I'm saying? And those yep. lights that are yep. on half the time, that all of that yep. works your body. And they don't. And, and when you when you're drinking a lot, like you said, taking a whole bottle of Hennessy to the head. You know what I'm saying? Back door with the goose and trying to just be live yep. and, and probably popping all kind of shit. And you know that yep. right there, your body your body can like you said it can shut down, and that shit did did it feel good, did it? Real shit. Real shit. Yeah. People don't know when that pain starts sitting in and they start locking up, getting cramps and shit, they wonder where that shit come from. Need right. some water. Need some water. Yeah. Cause no, and nobody's saying all of that. Yeah, for real. And nobody's telling you about the, the aches and pains that they get when, when they got to shut off the lights and pull you off the stage and keep the party going. They don't, they don't come out and be like, yeah, I was fucked up and I was hurt, though. They don't tell you all of that. They just tell you I was fucked up and, and, and we had fun on the road and, and I ain't getting no sleep and I banged a bunch of bad bitches. They ain't say, but nigga couldn't. I'm not even going to go there, but I'm just saying. Some <laughs> <niggas>. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's real, though. 
it, it don't do your body good all the time. And sometimes the bitches look at that and be like, nigga, that's all you got? Yeah, that's, that's the water. I'm just saying. <laughs> right. Y'all know yeah. I'm a damn fool. I'm just saying. He be cutting up, man. That's what makes the show fun. Exactly. <laughs> I be watching because I know I lie. I got no ears around sometimes. I feel you. But going back to the first ever mixtape, you dropped a death certificate, man. Like that got nominated for for a mixtape award, right? Yeah, yeah, it got nominated for the. I got four nominations actually for the Justo Awards. It was it was a real big deal. Saying it was um, you know, it was it was you know, again, I came back off tour. I I, I didn't listen to every classic album that that that, that could be. And I was just super focused, man, and went in, and I ended up coming out with some epic, you know what I mean? And it was, um, you know, that 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 tape right there really kind of helped me get put on the map and build some other relationships, and people understand that, you know, it wasn't just about me making radio records, but like, you know, the young boy can really, really spit. So, it, it really, it, it really helped out a lot. And people don't realize how much of an important figure Justo really was. Rest in peace. Right. I was about to say R.I.P. to Justo, but yeah, no, he. That was that was like, you know, that was that that's a that's a monumental achievement or, or accomplishment that I kind of put on that board. You know what I mean? Like like just to even be you know nominated and you know in 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 those in those categories was was uh, super huge. Yeah, because you you was in competition with guys that was putting out at the time. I think it was the Clips, with Cameron. Yep. It was Fifty. Yep. And you was yep. you was neck and neck with these guys. So right. I knew, I, was, you know like, I knew this guy had some juice, no pun intended. Right, right. Young boy, young boy. Matter of fact, it's funny because I um I ran in I ran into Cameron. I want to say about a month ago. He was out in L.A. and we just got the politics. And he was like, Yeah, 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 you the young boy. And I said the same thing. I was like, Yo, you know, I was yeah. up against you in the Justo. And then he started laughing and we just started start politicking. But you know, shout out to Cam. I rock with Cam, man. He he he, he a real solid dude. Man, that sounds like back when we had some, some true spitters, man. It, it, you was in competition with some real people, and you was up there though, like you said, you was neck and neck with them boys. That's that's a that's a true kind of kind of feeling right there. Because I mean, these days, not to say that people not true true legendary potential types or whatever, but back then you had to come hard with the lyrics, you had to come hard with the bars, the music, the the production right. of it all. You know what I'm saying? The the performances, well, niggas was very critical at the time, and and like you said, you had Fifty Gang and all of these niggas that that came with it too. So, it did did it help you in your mind? Do you think that helped push you to become who you are and help push the lyrics to be more on point? Then maybe these days it, it's helping these artists with the type of competition or people that that they have to to beat out to get you know the shows and the and the sales and all of that. You think that helped I me mean, people? I mean, for me, you know what I'm saying. I want to say like having that level back then helped me a lot because it kept me on my game. Like people got to understand, like you know, game was game is a real life rapper. Like you know, the nigga really spit. Like he ain't, you know what I'm saying. Like like he really go in. You know what I'm saying. And and you know, the the surrounding he had of people was was the same way, and so was his peers. So you know. They always made sure that the, that that the young boy was you know bringing his uh, bringing his best. I mean I know nowadays is is a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? And that's not no knock to anybody you know who who not spitting because everybody got their own um, you know window that they that they look out of and and, and create their music. But uh, you know like I said back then it was a little bit more more competition. I think there was a little bit more more push and pressure for for cats to create. A certain level of music. I think now it's just, you know, it's it's it, it's not to that type of level. You know what I'm saying? It's not back then level. Hmm. It well, came more like the jungle back then. Right, yeah. right, it was all the dog. right. And, and look, back then, see, I know they had the the BT, the 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 rap city, the, all of that stuff that people yeah. were spying it on. And these days they don't have as many like stations on TV, networks on TV that they can get onto and and know that everybody's gonna see their videos. So do you think that those kind of avenues help push people too? Because I mean now everybody can get on YouTube. You just upload the shit. 
So right. you think they pick people back then as far as like a difference in today? No, I I, th- I think that those that those platforms were all needed to help get you know what I'm saying artists in this music thing to 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 a certain level. But what I but what I do somewhat have a disagreement with is this: I think that now music is so accessible that it's kind of devaluing the quality that it needs to be. See, back then, artists went through artist development. There was a process. There was a structure. There was a a, a true uh, formula of trying to create a certain expectation and level of music. I think that music and the outlets are so uh, uh, you know easily accessible now that people are not really due diligently doing their homework and just kind of putting out whatever. And you know, and, and, and again, I'm not knocking them. It's just from the era I come from. I'm just saying it's just I kind of think that that right now is kind of the reason why some of the you know you know the record sales is down and, and, and things like that. Even even the internet, but I'm just talking about the quality of music. You know what I'm saying? It is very very different than what it was back then. Plus, well, it's like the the standards have have became different because now nowadays exactly. people are just happy to go gold. Exactly. Like you know you know you know what not you know you know just to, just to touch on a, a quick basis. I tell people this, you know, being signed to, you know, when when I got signed the game and then I ended up coming home after 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 the tour, niggas was like, yo, my man changed. It's because I really didn't want to work with a lot of people. And it wasn't because of my arrogance. And it wasn't because of that. It was because the person that I was signed to, expectation for music was beyond what the average person can understand. You got to understand like, he came from the umbrella of Dr. Dre, of Eminem, of 50 Cent. These guys at the time, they didn't go platinum. These niggas were selling 10 million, 8 million, 15 million records. So if, if, if they were so if they were to even go platinum, that's a failure. The thing about it is, is when you learn from somebody of that caliber, your IQ starts to grow and your hunger starts to grow. So... Your appetite for success is different than the average person. It, you know, it wasn't. It, it, it was just for me. Was that again, the level and quality of music that I was learning from from the from the aftermath and Black Wall Street level was completely different than the average street level. And I didn't want to. That you know what I'm saying. I, I didn't want to backtrack. You know what I'm saying and start working with cats who didn't understand that level of professionalism and music. So yeah. Yeah, that's like lowering your expectations and just biting a bullet and doing what is necessary instead of what's for real. Yeah. It's like the it's like the modern NBA. It's like you getting on there with the Lakers where you had Shaq and Kobe and Kareem and all of them. It's like you got to show and prove. Right. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying, nigga? You you know you you in practice with Kobe and Shaq now, and you ain't sitting next to, you know what I'm saying to to. Sam Cassell, we, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you over here, you know what I mean, balling with Shaq and Kobe. You better, you know what I mean, get it right, Daddy. They they, they got championships on the board, baby. What you talking about? You know, <laughs> man. That's why. That's where your your winning mentality changed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, out of the mixtapes that you know you got nominated for, like which one is your personal favorite? Um, the fan favorite is Death Certificate, of course, you know what I'm saying, but my personal one would probably have to be, I would probably say Position of Power, and I would have to say that because, you know, I think that's when the growth and transition of, you know, from, from a a young man to like a man really, really started to take place for me. You know what I'm saying? Like I really wasn't just sitting up under the big homie anymore. It was, it was, it was more of me coming into my own, finding my own lane. You know what I'm saying? Really following my vision. You know. So it was basically you taking more control of the product. Exactly, exactly. You know what I'm saying? At, at that point, I was, I was more just, you know, you know what? Let you know, you know, you know. Hold on, big homie. I. I got this. This, you know what I'm saying. Be proud of your young nigga while I put up points. You know what I'm saying. That's that's how I felt. 
Uh, and I can respect that it. because it's like in the game now, it's just like when people be in that position of power, they don't want the young dudes to surpass them, so they try to hold that information back. Right, right. And, and but, but 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 you know it's funny because you know I dealt I dealt with that. I, well, I felt I dealt with that. You know, somewhat too. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I kind of was like, you know, at first I took a lot of flack because I felt like, well, maybe he, he just ain't really trying to see me like go further. You know what I mean? Because my thing was I had a different outlook for myself than what game had for me. You know what I'm saying? Like I was I was that dude like, you know, I appreciate sleeping in your mansion. I appreciate riding in your Bentley, but the disconnect was that's not mine. That's yours. Mine. So in this in this this hour when we get when we come back from eating, reality is going to set when I walk out this car because it's your car. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's not it's not mine. So my wants start becoming different. My work ethic started becoming different, and my vision for my business started becoming different at that time too. You start realizing, like, you know, shit, he got a Bentley, I need one. He got a mansion, I need one. So, you know what? He works for his, let me work for mine. So, that's when the position of power started changing. And that's why, actually, that's why I called that tape position of power, because I felt like I started coming into my own at that time. And, you know, that says a lot about you and your character, because, you know, there's a lot of niggas out there that is is just fine, you know, they they... They even go as far as to hate on the nigga that has the Bentley and is driving him around and letting him sleep in their mansion. They'll eat off of that shit all day long. Don't don't try to even go get their own. And then behind closed doors, they're hating the whole damn time when, like you said, all you got to do is see that this is what you want and go out and get it for yourself. So that that right. speaks volumes about the character to say, hey, I appreciate it, I liked it, yeah. and it made me want my own, so I worked to get my own. That's that's yeah. that's real nigga shit right there. Some niggas don't yes. don't understand real nigga shit. Man, I said all Separate the time. Separate the men you know, from the boys. Like, you know, niggas yeah, ask yeah. me all the time, you, you know, about game, and I'm like, listen, man, you know, game is my big brother. You know what I'm saying? I can never say anything disrespectful, rude about him at all. Like, he gave me a platform for the world to know who I am. You know what I'm saying? And I will forever be appreciative for that. But my goal now is to create a certain level of success at a high level where, where I can humbly, you know what I'm saying, make him proud and pay that back the right way. You know what I'm saying? Like, And, I, and I'm, not, I'm not saying pay it back as in, you know, you know, anything monetary. I'm just saying, like, yo, you took your time, your money, your effort to sign me. So when you see me, you know, on the, on the grandstand, know that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, the you, time you, wasn't you, you, right, exactly. You you helped create that. You know what I'm saying? And and, and that's a that's a solid reflection on you. Real real shit. Yeah, yeah. They always say you got to be just as good as your coach, if not better. And if the if the if the player is better than the coach, that means the coach did something right. And, and right, it's always good when you have somebody that's humble enough to accept the fact that somebody that they mentored strived and and soared whether it be just as high or even further, because at the end of the day, you know, the, if they look on, on their self-reflection, they can see, look, without you, I may or may not have been here, but how I got here happened to be under your mentorship, and that should be right. something that people congratulate themselves for and look in the mirror and say, damn, I did do well, I was inspiration, I was motivation, and I helped the determination of this person. So um, right. I'm glad to hear that, and I hope that's how he really feels. Because he yeah. did do good with the person he worked with. Not real close. Are you still keep in touch with other, the other Black Wall Street members? Yeah, um, you know what I'm saying. I mean, a few of us all, you know, keep in contact. Um, you know, my man, my son. I don't, I don't know if y'all are familiar with uh, my son. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He, um, that's my man. You know, he out there in New York. He's pushing a cold, a cold line right now. Um, I keep in contact with him, New Jersey Devil, of course. Um, who else? My man Scipio. Yeah, we all, we all, we all somewhat keep in, keep in, keep in contact for sure. That's what it That's do. That's good because this game was trying to get that, get that, get that Black Wall Street reunion pop. Yo, you know, ah. yo, you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy is I. I think it might happen. You know what I'm saying? I mean, niggas have been really texting and communicating a little bit frequent these last couple of days, and I mean, I mean the last couple of weeks, excuse me. And um, 
I mean, you know, everybody's kind of been like like saying the same thing. So I think everybody, you know, gonna gonna go ahead and maybe do a, a solid conference call and take a flight out there to see game and sit him down and like, look, man, let's do this Blackwall reunion tour and get it popping. That's what's up. That would be nothing. Yes, indeed, because y'all had a lineup of spitters for real. My dude, I'm trying to tell you, it was so like, it was it was real life dog eat dog on that tour bus. I'm trying to tell you, it was real life. <laughs> like, yo, you 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 had to come hard. You know what I mean? Every every chance you got, you know what I'm saying? They were coming at your neck every day, but you had to get it. Not bad. And that's the. It's that animal instinct that you have in this game. And even our co-host, Ill Out of Sandman, he can tell us because he's an MC as well. It's like everywhere you turn and you're a rapper and you had to battle or you had to get put on a cypher, you had to show it. You couldn't, yeah, it couldn't be fun. on no, it couldn't be on no, well, I'm too paid to rap. Nah, nigga, you got to get in that booth. Right, right. There wasn't none of that. You know what I'm saying? Nah. So, right, though. With that being said, I got a question because I've, I've run into this situation before, and so I'm just going to ask you. Is there ever a point in time, especially when you're not like a national artist, you don't, you're not put up for Grammys, you're not selling a million records type shit, is there ever a right. time where an artist should feel like they, their plans could not be to open up for a legendary artist or, you know, open up for anybody big? They need to be the headliner or nothing at all. Nah, that's um, you know, you know, the thing about that is, you know, I, that that still happens now to everybody. You know, I was I was watching the interview when um, was it Genuine and and Tyrese, where Tyrese wanted to be the be the headliner, or 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 something like, or Tyrese felt that Genuine shouldn't be paid as much as he got paid in the group because he felt he was a bigger artist, but. I guess on paper, Genuine sold more records than Tyrese. So, granted, he ain't in Fast and Furious Seven or whatever, but he, but in the music industry, he sold more than Tyrese. So, you know, for me, it's like this. You know, at the end of the day, man, as long as you got a big platform, you know what I'm saying, to really stand on, it's up to you as an artist to place where you want to be placed at. But it comes down to your performance and how you rock with people. You know, at the end of the day, man, you know, if 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 it's me, game, New Jersey Devil, and they be like, all right, you know what I'm saying, Richie, you gotta you gotta open up. You know, and I may feel that I should go right before him. Okay, cool, put me there. But ain't everybody after me though? Oh, you gonna know that you 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 gonna have to bring everything in the world because I'm gonna make sure that 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 you know my show is three thousand percent lit every night. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it's sometimes, man, you just gotta just you know you know. Make make your stat show. You know what I'm saying. So so cats don't even have an argument or room to argue with you or or try to devalue where you feel like you want to be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, yeah. And you see, know, I'm, I'm, that's it. In that situation, you talking about some some artists with some names and their own fan base. And so I can kind of understand the egos and the and the feelings behind it. But right, I know some some artists that are barely local celebrities, and and they feel like if they Begin in somebody's shadow. If they open up for somebody big, then they'll never break out the shadow, or you know they'll just be considered no. the person who no. opened up for so and so. But no, in my no, mind, no. that's how you. That's how you make your mark right there. You, know, I tell you, know, listen, you know, AI had the shit on Jordan at one point. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> huh. Like, like it, that's your, that's your, that's your point. That's your, that's your, that's your time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, I, I say it all the time. One of my biggest times ever. Was when me and Game was in Miami with DJ Khaled, actually, and we was freestyling, and they was like, "Yo, you know, Game was bodying it," and they looked over and was like, "Go ahead, do your thing." First time, I knew at that point, in order to get my respect on a national level, whatever he just spit, I got to body it so I can at least be mentioned somewhere in there. You know what I'm saying? Like, some of these artists got to get back to understanding, you know what I mean? This is, you know, this is still a competition. 
this is still a, 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 a you know a dog eat dog situation to gain your respect, family. Like you know, don't take it as you're beneath anybody, man. Take that as it's my time to shine. So next time there's a show, I know who they call him with the bag. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, oh, no, yeah, that's. A, I like that. That is now, hold on, we have right a, Now hold on, we have a three four seven caller here. We right. got juice on the line. Yes, the name the name is Raymond Henson. I I, I, I fucks with off the cut radio. Y'all be doing it real big. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. The game was game was a dope MC. Yeah, he nice. Yeah, he's, nice. he's mad nice. So he's really he, we got he got a lot of talent. His albums be real hot and everything. Yeah, he be, game be he's nice. Huh? I want to I want I said I want to send a shout out to his crew. Love. Love. They got a lot of talent. They got mad talent. Mm. Love. Yeah. Yeah, he got some stuff. Spitters, my stuff got, yeah, stuff you know, got game was game was game was always the spitter, man. You know what I'm saying? I, but I, I think game is probably one of the the most underrated though. I don't think that people give him as much credit as he should, but I think that's because his personal antics outweigh his musical credibility. You feel me? Like okay. you know, man, you know you yeah, know, you know, you know, game stuff. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, just, you know, all the 50 Cent shit, all types of other shit. You know, he a raw rod nigga. He was the shit all across the board. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I feel like, I feel like they just, you know, his his musical talent, you know what I'm saying, is really, really dope. Like, he got a classic album in the documentary, and the body of work that came after that, you know, is bar none, just as equal as some of the greatest albums out. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, no, no, game is game is dope, man. He, he you know, he, yeah, he, he's super, he got some good production, so his production is tight. Yeah, his ear game is right. Yeah, real talk. Real talk. We got some tight hey, production. Hey, you have your shout out to give our player? Because these lines are burning yeah, up. I wanna, I wanna, I, yeah, I want to shout out, I want to shout out Off the Cuff Radio, and I want to shout out my projects, Eden Ball. Well, That's look, the best. Appreciate yeah, hey, appreciate y'all keep call, doing bro. your thing. I keep, I keep doing your thing. Keep keeping it raw. Love. Right, bro. And keep listening, too. We appreciate you coming on, and we appreciate you listening. For sure. That's what's up. You know, I'm going to keep listening because I'll be, I'll be having some good topics on there. I'll be seeing y'all posted on Facebook a lot. Every day, man. Tune in Friday, every Friday night, 9 p.m. 6 Pacific, 8 Central. We out here. Repping. Yeah, yeah. Y'all gonna um, y'all gonna um, y'all gonna y'all gonna move into like to, to one of the big radio stations. We got something in the works. We don't want to spoil. We don't want to spoil that right now because you know we got a lot of people that want to probably throw some salt at the game. So we got to keep our moves silent. <laughs> All right, y'all keep got doing a lot of it, man. I want. Y'all yeah, want to see y'all? I want to see y'all make it big, man, for real. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, we appreciate that confidence for sure. Yeah. All right now. All right yeah, now. Have man. a good night. Yeah. No. You too, brother. All right, we have a 909 caller. Juice man getting a lot of love tonight. Huh. 909, you're on. 909. All right. Yep. Yeah. What's going on? What's up? You know who it is? I think you're breaking up, man. Sound like JoJo. It might have been JoJo. I'm going to get JoJo to call back, but nevertheless, man, we got Richie Evans in the building with us right now. We building up with him. He's giving us a lot of good game about the industry. How you had to be a... You had to... You had to Surviving this cutthroat game, you couldn't come out there with no half-ass balls. You had to come over. You had to come correct. All the way, man. Huh. All the way. All the way. Yeah. So with this and project you're coming out, like, is there any like guest guest features that we should be no no worthy of? Yeah, 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 yeah. On the new project, um, you know, I got my man Nipsey Hustle on there. Um, I got oh. Ti on there. Um. Who else I got on there, man? Of course, I got game on there. Um, 
I'm trying to, you know, re- like real talk, I'm trying to get this clearance with Jasmine Sullivan. I'm, I'm a real fan of her work. And I'm really trying to trying oh, to trying to get in and, 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 and lock that down. So, you know, I got a couple of big surprises in the works though, but you know, I really wanna get in with Jasmine Sullivan and really make something epic and soulful for the people. You feel me? But yeah, like I said, I got Game T I, Nipsey, um Who else, man? Jake and Papa, of course, they're on the new single to come and talk to me joint. So yeah, we're working around there, you know. That's a hell of a lineup right there. And the and the beautiful part about that is that he built that off of respect. Huh. Off top. Off top. Huh. That's good. Yeah. So respect, respect goes a long way in the game. Yeah. So look, that goes into another question that I asked some artists, not all of them, but how do you feel about the the fact that artists, uh, upcoming artists, have the ability to buy likes and to buy the the hearts and shit on on Instagram and Twitter and. And, and and buy their way onto the Billboard charts and all of the different charts that they have that go by the actual uh, fan base and following that you have on social media. You know, that's, that's crazy to me. Yeah, that is, it, it, it's crazy because, you know, I get it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, if it works for me, do. I mean, I'm from a different era where, you know, even, even to this day, you know what I'm saying? I want the genuine love. I don't need nothing prosthetic. Keep it all the way solid with me. You know what I'm saying? Nah. Like, you know, nothing, you know, you know, it, it worked for some people and that's cool. But for me, I'm going to go ahead and slow roll the snowball to make it really go to where it need to be. You know what I'm saying? I understand this industry is not a sprint. It's a marathon. So I'm going to go ahead and build my fan base one fan at a time. Yeah, yeah. That's Genuinely. Good. One, one, one real fan trip, at though. a time. I mean, it'd be a trip, huh? though, because these guys, you would think that when they buying likes and they buying YouTube likes and stuff like that, you seeing this dude like, oh, this dude got four or five million likes, and you go to his show, he got three hundred people there. That's what I'm saying. I've seen that. I've seen that happen. I've seen it happen. I've seen out in Florida, they end up booking this this kid from L.A., and they was impressed because he had a million followers, and they was like, and he had he had a couple songs out, but I started looking at the shit too, and I was like, ah, uh, it's not really matching up. But I was out there working with uh, my man from Sobe, so I was like, you know what? Let's pull up to the show because I was like, yo. If this kid, you know, I mean, and, and, and I think they gave him like thirty bands for the show. It was something crazy. <laughs> then when we went to the show, we went to the show. Like my man had like it was probably like twenty people in there. I and knew he was gonna say some stuff. I knew he was gonna say a bullshit number. It was like twenty, 20 people. 20. Like like like. We were like, like, and again, like, I was kind of like, you know, and again, I, you know, I tried to with myself. I sat back, like, well, maybe this ain't his market, or you know what I'm saying? But then come to find out, they end up having, you know, like suing the kid and trying to get the money back because it was fake followers. Like, he, he, he found his followers and he really wasn't known. And, 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 you know, and, you know, I guess he bought his, uh, his single followers too. You know what I'm saying? In SoundCloud or, or whatever. But, I, hey, to each his own. I'm not, you know. Hey, they pushed them packages. Hold on, now, hold on one second, guys. We have a guest coming. Our co-host is here. Uh, one third of the guillotine. Hold on, we gotta put that. Gotta put that theme song for him. <laughs> when this guy get in the building, it gets it gets real. Huh. It gets real quick. Already. Put that theme on right. There. This may be him, let's see It better be him, cause we putting the 718 on there If it is, gonna be a power Oh uh, man, one, two, one, two Another Friday, another day I chill with the guillotine fam. Yeah. Yeah, man. We got the man Juice in the building, a.k.a. Rich. Oh, yeah. My dude, yo, what's going on, Juice? How you feeling, brother? I'm love, brother. How you, champion? Man, look, I just came from eating a hell of a good sandwich from scratch. (laughs) Like, I just dug in my refrigerator. (laughs) 
and just got all different types of ingredients and put it in between two slices of bread with yeah, chips on the yeah. side. Ain't nothing wrong did with that shaggy and shrug. <laughs> did you just say a sandwich from scratch? Did you say a sandwich from scratch? A sandwich from scratch. There you go. <laughs> That's a nigga that's been up with yeah, we building with the goo, man. So what I miss, like, talk to me, Jules. What's going on, brother? Like, you know, how you man. feeling, you know? Talk nah, to we me. Good. No, we good, daddy. We good. We just already just talk about, you know what I mean? Just, just, you know, the growth of music from, you know what I'm saying? You know, the, the you know, past era till now. And just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Talk about just... A bunch of the, you know, you know, things that's, that's that's kind of going on. You know what I mean? You know, the artists and and you know, artist development and niggas nowadays not having like core fan bases and that they creating and they buying likes and you know, we just you know we talking that talk on the show. You feel me? How long, Juice? Cool. You gotta tell them what you just told us, Juice. You gotta tell us about the million followers and how many fans he had in that in that 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 venue. Please yeah. tell them one time. Yeah, yeah, we was, you know, what I'm saying, me and my man. They uh so they, there was this big so so there was this um this booking agent and he was talking to us that he was booking this kid from from L A and he had a million followers and he had a, he had a single or two you know what I'm saying but it wasn't you know nothing off the charts so they ended up booking this kid in Miami for like thirty bands but but they was more they was just more like yo he got a million followers this kid must be the next you know Drake or something phenomenon like yeah right so so at this particular point. When um, they end up having the show, me and my people was already out there working in uh, Miami. So I was like, "Yo, they got the um, the young boy, you know what I'm saying? Who 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 they just paid thirty to to do the show? See, I wanted to go see him because I was mad because I didn't get the booking because they gave the money to homie. So I really needed to go oh, see who he was. It. You know what I mean? Who he was? You feel me? So yeah. Keeping it together. We end up we end up going to the show and we walk in and Doggy had like. 20 people, like, in the venue held, like, 2,500, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> like, I was, like, hold, hold on, though, at the time, my nigga, I can't, at the time, I thought, I said, this nigga's a genius, <laughs> I said, he, got, I said, this guy just came out here and got 30 bands, because he paid somebody, he paid somebody, he paid somebody to, to, to kid up his Instagram and his Facebook. I said, man, mm. <laughs> and I told yo, I don't, don't mean to cut you off, Juice. Like I, we spoke about that from before. Like me and King, I told him about that. You know, don't be fooled when it comes to the numbers. I know we go, through, you know, we go about that whole entendre about numbers don't lie. Right. Nowadays they do. I said all the time, brother. I, I, I just, I, I just told him. I said, man, listen. I'd rather slow roll the snowball and build my fan base up at one fan at a time than to be out here ghost following or whatever they call it. You know what I mean? It's like how you get, how you got millions of views, but when you throw a show in your own hometown, yeah, and only ten people come through. Yeah, Get the fuck out of here. If five of them, if yeah. five of them be your family. <laughs> wow. Oh, right. That's that ridiculous. No, them motherfuckers didn't even pay. Didn't I said, yeah, that got to be his sister and his cousin. That got to be an extended girlfriend or something because he got to have some <laughs> people in. And, and, and not only that, you know what else, you know what else they do, Jews? Mm. They make fake accounts. You know, ah. they, motherfuckers that have like 10... 10 or 15 ghost accounts. That's what I call I call them ghost accounts. Because right. when you go to most of those accounts that be liking or commenting, these motherfuckers don't have no likes, no favorites. Only likes they have is the, 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 that particular video. But they don't have no favorites, no, no, nothing. Not even a fucking right. pick. Right. You don't have a pick, no, sorry. No pick, no Not nothing. It. It's crazy, my dude. It's, trust me, it's, it's, it's super crazy. But I was also, you know what I mean, explaining about, um, you know, back in the day, you know what I'm saying, it was more of a certain expectation of quality of music that, that, that needed to come out, and as well as, as artist development. You know what I mean? You are very right. Now, 
I think now the accessibility. Now, I'm, I'm not blaming the accessibility because you know, again, if, if you if you have that outlet to promote or market your music, that's what you should do. But I also believe that there has to be a certain quality or industry standard that the music has to be at before it's released. And I think that's where we're, we're, we're running into an issue with this music of nowadays because everybody thinks that they can do it or everybody, you know, every, you know, like, 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 I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Like but that doesn't mean that you ready to go to the league yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, because you can shoot the rock necessarily don't make mean that you LeBron James, my nigga, you can go straight from the league. I mean, from high school to the league. You know what I mean? Mm. Like there got to be some steps in there to learn some shit. But, you know, to each his own, man. But let me ask you one thing, if you don't okay. mind me asking you. How old are you? Yes. Oh, I, I, I'm 31. All right, so, all right, yeah, so you definitely understand what's up. Do you remember yeah. that one time when this dude, Diddy, said that if you hate on anything musical, that means you're a hater? And then yeah. when he said that, everybody just gravitated towards that. A lot of people don't right. remember when he said that. Like around the shiny the sh- shiny suit shiny era and all that. Right. <laughs> he said that when he was making silly ass songs. And right. ever but, since then, people always stuck with that stigma. They always right. felt like, yo, you know what, dang, I don't want to be a hater because if I'm considered a hater then I won't be within the well, in crowd, like the popular people. You know, they look at me as an outcast. Right. And right. It just, went, and, it just spiraled what, out of control after that. But see, the crazy thing about it is, is where, where I disagree with that is this. I'm like, because I necessarily don't listen to your music, don't make me hating on your music. We just don't look out of the same window, my G. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 you know, um, I mean, like, okay, prime, prime example, right, you know, even so I, I'll use I'll use little Yachty because everybody's using, you know, you know, been speaking about that. I I'm not saying, you know, I think every artist has a has a lane, you know what I mean? Has a window. Now my thing that I'm saying is I think Yachty is doing good for his lane. You know what I'm saying? I think that he he tapped into a a, a, a ten to to to. 18 year old demographic who like to listen to his music now because I don't listen to it preferably or I don't rock with it that's necessarily me not saying that he don't got content that would work it's not it's my thing that I'm saying is nowadays is because you go to the you know what I'm saying because you you go to Walt you know at the Apple store and get you a laptop and throw pro tools on it don't make you Jimmy Jim and Terry Lewis you know what I'm saying? You still got, Damn you know no. what I mean? Like, like you still, you 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 still got to work at your craft. I'm saying everybody's expectation now is if they go into the studio today and drop a record tomorrow, they instantly just made a hit. Nigga Prince and Michael Jackson didn't even do that. I mean, there's a formula and a grind to it that I feel that a lot of musicians are just <laughs> starting to pop past. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's that was hey, kind of my. You know, you know, like you know, what I'm saying, like, like you know, you know, more, more, yeah, more yeah. of that thought process. Because I, I'll use Prince and Michael Jackson and, and, and the older people, you know what I mean? Because I was just watching a documentary on them the other day, and they really was putting in work though. Like niggas was sitting huh. in the studio for, you know what I'm saying, a week straight, nigga in the same. You know, Literally, I mean, like uh, they had pillows and blankets yeah, up in the studio. They, they, they was in the same get up with the ruffle pom pom purple ball for the week, my nigga. Getting to it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying it's, I'm not hating on nobody's music. I just think that the time and expect expectation has has, has changed, and I think that that's kind of where the music has kind of declined a little bit. That's all. You think because of the t- you think technology played a role, or is it because? I, Artists are groomed a different way. Both. I, the reason why I would say the technology. I say that too. I, Hold I on, let me, let me let me let me touch on that. Like let me touch on that real quick, Juice. Yeah. Like you do, you definitely made a valid point when when it comes to that question. When it comes to like the upbringing, I really think it's that too, and that's what's always been missing. You know, like 
I always say it countless times. People just don't respect the legends in, in the hip hop game. And that shit is that shit is That's insane. That shit is insane. It's insane. Right. It, it, that is no I don't give a fuck if you fifty. Right. And you had a name you had a name for yourself from before. And you still doing your thing. Like look at Red Man. Look at Red Bro. Man. I think Red Man about to push fifty. And niggas was sitting there, he made a video not so long ago talking about how you, you stay in the studio, you work hard, and whatever. Motherfuckers just hating on Redman in the comments. Like, yo, how can you hate on Redman? This dude, I lyrical firepower is insane. Night. To this day. I seen, la- I seen that last night where he posted, and I said genius, because he posted an interview. He goes, niggas is always asking where am I at? And he's like, nigga, I'm in the studio. He says, he goes, I bought me a studio and I locked myself in here so I can learn how to engineer and master my own shit. Exactly. And that's that's genius. That's, and I'm wondering, yo, you see one of the top comments in the all the nah, Sandman? One of the top <laughs> comments on that in the all the Sandman. I commented mm. on that. That's me. I have one okay, of the top comments on there. Rant and what spasm. <laughs> I'm going to check that out while I'm on, while I'm on the Me air. Me too. Because it's ridiculous because, <laughs> you know, you got to respect for Because let's really be real. You no, know I mean, even off the cuff radio wouldn't exist wouldn't, if we didn't have our trailblazers. Right. You know what I mean? The huh. basketball team. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, man. Hey, we got to show respect to the pioneers because it kind of hurts me to see a lot of our legends. They doing whole hole in the wall type j- joints like in front of a thousand people, and then yet you see all these old rock heads. They doing stadiums. You right? Yeah, that You're shit right. sucks. And don't get me wrong. Hey, don't get me wrong. Most of our legends, they, you know, they fucked up amongst themselves. They right. go out there, you uh-huh. know, and basically just tarnish their career. You know, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, it, they're, they're all not saints. True that. Yeah. Just fuck on that type of stuff earlier. Just, just fuck on that. He hit that kind of subject a little bit earlier. Yeah, that's yep. the truth right there. Dude, now I was going in on hello. Hello. Yeah, I was I was saying a little bit earlier, you know what I'm saying? When I, you know, one of the things Game did for me when I first signed with him was uh, we was going overseas and he gave me a thousand dollars. And he said, I want you to go to the, I want you to go to the uh, record store. And I want you to buy every classic album. And he was like, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, and we was we we we, we was going to be in Europe, I think, for two months at the time. So he's like, I want you to buy every every classic album. I'm talking about from, you know, Kill It Will, Death Certificate, to, you know, Illmatic, to, to you know what I'm saying, Jay-Z, to, you know, Outkast, you know, Public Enemy, you know what I'm saying, the DOC, Big L, Big Pun. Like, he really wanted me to get an understanding of what the culture was about. And, 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 and that's and, fucking, and, ama- that's awesome. That's yeah, okay. amazing. Would you consider a game, I don't know about now, but then, like a okay. mentor or a manager? No, no. Game was game was my mentor and my and my and my big brother for sure. It just, you know, in a nutshell, it happened like 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 this. And I always use basketball analogies because it makes makes it a little bit easier. You know, when Game was going through his shit with Fifty and all that, you know what I'm saying? And he was building up his brand. He ended up, you know, I, he you know he told me this. You know, he signed me because I reminded him of himself, but a little bit younger and fresher. See. The thing that game liked about me and people know is, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm born in, in PA. You know what I'm saying? I'm born, I'm, I'm born on, 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 on the East Coast and I was raised in Arizona. So I was one of the niggas who, like him, if you took me to New York and threw me on, you know, one of them joints that I can, you know what I mean? I can, I can, I can hold. What was you born at? Well, hold on. What was you born at in the East? I was, I was in Pennsylvania. I was born in York, PA. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, 
that's where, you know what I mean? That's where my family, the whole nine, and we ended up moving out to Arizona to, to the West Coast. So, you know, my grandparents. Right. Shots, go out to, shots go out to Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. So we, you know, we, we you know, was on it. But but long story short, you know, game was a, was a mentor. But when things got to moving, I seen my success for me further than I think where he wanted me to be. As I was kind of telling them, it comes a point where I appreciate, you know, the study on, you know, creating music and, and, and learning it. But then, you know, you come a time where Little Monkey turned gorilla. Like, yo, at the end of the day, family, I'm not cool with driving in your Bentley. I need my own. I'm not cool with walking into your house. I need my own. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I understand, um, you know, I got a platinum. I, I have a platinum plaque on the wall. But that's yours, not mine. I need mine, baby. See, when you when you pick mm. me, I felt like Kobe. I'm not cool with putting on the jersey, baby. I need a championship for myself. Mm. Uh, so, so when when you know again, and, and there was no love lost. It just had to be the conversation, big homie. I love you dearly, but at the route that we cooking right now, I need more. And I know that you were a contractual obligation that kind of you know, held everything down, and he was like, you know what, you're right, so he gave a couple of us the opportunity to, 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 to move forward because he knew we had other interests from other major labels. Now, my thing to him was, I appreciate you, I can never say anything bad about you, you my big brother, I'm going to make sure the, le- the legacy live on, my goal now is to, on my mission, just make sure, you know, I, I make him proud to do the right shit, you feel me? So, that's it. Uh Yo, you don't got the round of you don't got the round of applause set up, King. Come oh, on, man. man dropping so much <laughs> no, science. I'm taking notes myself so we can give it to future <laughs> show. Come on, King, get on it, man. See what I'm talking about? We're gonna have a meeting after this. <laughs> we taking notes right here. But let's give a man a round uh, of applause for all these guys. Yo, any money bet that juice that dude juice balls grew a little bit bigger after that. Man, oh, stop. stop. That stop. nigga ball yeah, dropped to the fucking floor. I know you <laughs> were scared to say that shit a little bit too. He was like, damn. I don't know, I'm nah. to just you know, it's like I'm burying my career. But fuck it. Nah, I gotta tell them. Nah. I gotta keep it all the way. That's the second time solid. you get it though. They already know. I had to, I think I had we to have keep a solid. Now we have a 602 caller. Let me see what we got here. 602. It's whack. It's black 100. (laughs) Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. (laughs) Yo, what's going on, caller? Yo, what's happening, man? All right, what's going on, caller? State your name. Where you calling from? All that fly stuff. Uh Um. They call me John out here from Phoenix AZ. Shout out, yeah. Phoenix. Shout out, love. Yeah, yeah. Love. I'm, saying, I'm saying, just showing love, the homie Juice Love, who goes by Richie now, you know what I'm saying? I've been rocking with him since 06. You know, he's oh. local around the city, and then when the big homie game came out here and picked him up, been rocking him ever since. Nice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, question. Uh, um, when we gonna get some more time. music though? Yo, yeah, we working. We just dropped a new single to come and talk to me joint right now. It's available on all major markets. I'm about to follow up shortly, man, and do something out there for the city. I'm gonna drop another one, and then I'm gonna have a private, um, you know, intimate um concert. You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm gonna give out inv- invitation only. So make sure you know what I mean. If, if you follow me on on Instagram. Hit me in the DM, and I'll make sure that I have my people, you know, reach out and give you one. But uh, I'm about to drop another record here within the next week to come and talk to me. Re- uh, video going drop, and uh, I'm dropping shit all summer, baby. We're moving. Oh, yeah. Coming. Hell, yeah. Like the year, man. The name of the track is Come and Talk to Me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The name of the single is called, right now, it's called Come and Talk to Me. It's featuring an R&B group out of um, L.A. called Jake and Papa, actually, that just signed the Priority Records. Um, we end up getting into the studio one night, man, and we end up kind of recreating the whole Jodeci uh, joint. Nice. Man. Nice. Man. You know, as a, cause yo, I grew up with Jodeci. That's why I had to, you know what I'm saying? I had to ask you again. 
But you already know, yeah, my yeah. dude, like, you got to, you know, capitalize on it nowadays. You know yeah. how Jordan C did the video. But yeah. do the video the same way, but just put your own little yeah. spin on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, have, like, an Instagram yeah, I... model in there or something, showing her ass cheeks and twerking <laughs> or, or something, hey, you know, hey. make it more modern day-ish. Now, Pete Fish, though, it's crazy because when I end up doing the record, I end up having my people reach out to Jodeci because I wanted to have them officially on the remix because I was trying to bridge the gap from that type of era of music to 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 the to the new era of music so I can get both demographics. You feel me? But they was on the road and um, I guess they, they they people said that they couldn't get it back until like August or some shit. But I'm still gonna try to push the line. You know what I'm saying? And, and try to and try to you know do something with them though because I am a fan of them as well. You know what I mean? And if I can, re- oh, yeah, definitely. Re- search, you know, if I can, I'm re- about to show the team. Like we was about to have him on the show not so long ago, like a few years back. You know, but you know, technical difficulties. They was feeling themselves. I'm gonna say it. They was feeling themselves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know y'all was feeling yourselves because y'all you came what, back though, with that new up. shit, and we reached out yeah. to y'all, and you know, y'all had a last minute gig. That's all good though. Yeah, we, uh, we had to hit her with this, though. We had to hit her with this. Niggas <laughs> 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 ain't hey, welcome back right now. <laughs> 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 you know, I thought you were going to say what show still. Look, I thought I thought Deuce was gonna say when he said we got this R and B that's R and B group that's featuring. I could have sworn he was gonna say jealousy, but he didn't. I thought it was going down. Nah, nah, like I said, I trust you. I, I, I sure did try to make that work first, you know what I'm saying? But, I, you know, the time frame didn't work out, but I, I'll touch him, though. But like I said, I, I got something in store for the remix, though, something heavy, so stay tuned on that. I'll make sure that that that, that yeah, you already know, though. First to get it. If, you, if you invite Joe to see, if you invite Joe to see to the video shoot, you better have that liquor and weed on that. <laughs> <Play like. laughs> They're like, fuck that. No dice. Last minute show. Can't make it. Man. <laughs> I hate <laughs> shit. <laughs> Man. Matter of fact, what we should do is, is we know before we go off there, we should we should just go ahead and play the song. Just give it yeah, a yeah, yeah. push, you know what I'm saying? Man, come on. Are we going to go with it? Yeah, we're going to go ahead and play the joint just to give our fans... Another dose of it. Then we're going to come back. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Wait, 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 King. You know what I'm saying? Let Juice introduce that song. Go ahead, Juice. Take uh, it away. Man, and we're going to play that. Know what it is. I got you. You already know what it is, man. It's your man, Richie Evans, live and direct, a.k.a. Juice. Right now, you locked in, too. About to hear the hottest joint out. Come and talk to me featuring Jake and Papa. Make sure you follow me on all my social sites at Who Is Richie. And like I said, we about to get it in. Come and talk to me. Holler at me. Let we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rich. Jake and Papa. Yeah, yeah. Come and talk to me. Yeah. When we in the shower, when we in the bed, get it on the counter. Heard what I said. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Come and pop with you looking, baby. My name's Rich. Just a brief. Production who you fit up with. I'm cooler than the fan and slides the fox. Have a couple shots of apple some rock and get personal HD virtual. When it comes to the sex, I'm surgical. Where you from, where you work, if you go to school. If you got a solid hustle, if you want to move. I'm trying to build, chef a meal. My cuddle buddy, Netflix and chill. Bible chip in office 42. And open your body and let it begin through. Shower, when we in the bed, get it on the counter, her when I say Something different. 50,000 feet in the air and she lifted. Loving 
the energy Sexual chemistry Moving from a chest to a breast like a centipede Trying to make amends So when I drop this music She know I'm more than a friend I'm trying to build Chef a meal My cuddle buddy Netflix and chill Buy what you like in office 42 And open your body and let it get through Come and talk to me Yeah in the shower, when we in the bed, get it on the counter, her and I said, say yeah, yeah, talk to me, hey, have my time flipping in the right place, how many legs do it take before you say, yeah, 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 you know it's nothing to vibe, we can hit the Ritz Carlton word to plot, introduce you to the team, put you on the lingo about a dollar in a dream. Baby, we got time. Talk about these power moves. Combine mind, combine dimes, combine grind. As long as you know, lady, that ass mine. I'm trying to build, chef a meal. My cuddle buddy, Netflix and chill. Buy what you like in office 42. And open your body and let it in the Like a 
They be tripping, man. Yo, that's what I'm talking about, B. This, all right, see, folks, this is what we're talking about, folks. We want to better ourselves to give you a better product. You know, like, we give you the legendary guests. We give you the information that you need to survive in the game. We play your music for free. We need those donations so we can better this shit, man. Look at the bullshit that we constantly have to go through. We need that, you know what I'm saying? We need that collateral so we can get on a better, you know, platform, station, or anything. We we just, yeah, you know what I'm saying? it's, It's needed. You know what I mean? Like, y'all, y'all want to sit here and criticize, yeah, call back phone but... And not even not even you sounding crazy, Ken. You sound like you were in the rainforest. He's on the other phone. He's on the other phone. Hey, you know what? That's why I put on the instrumental halfway thug, because they going half-ass with us right now. <laughs> you good, you good now. Yeah, you... You saw more clear than from before. Yeah, they had. That's why we had to get at the, that blog talk situation out because y'all have acting like halfway thugs. And another thing too, I put that instrumental on for the simple fact that it's the 20th anniversary of the War Report drop officially today. Mm, Round of applause, man! Come on. Round of applause, yo. You know, I mean, CK, <laughs> CK, you killing me. You, you uh, say you say shit like that. You gotta have a round of applause back in that. No, up. no, 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 no. Let me finish. Let me finish because here's the thing. It ain't just that album. That just what's up? 20. What's next? I always have a build up a roll in my sleeve. Wu Tang Forever turned twenty as well. The same day. Round of applause. Wow. Today's Wu Tang Clan birthday. The message of my madness. I mean, you can't go one without the other. Who tame forever? And round of applause. Report. One more round of applause, though. One, one more round of applause. Two of my favorite grind. Yes, they. <laughs> well, hold on, King. Hold on, King. Hold on, King. I just wanted to say, like, you know, the reason why I said. Second round of applause is because it is another anniversary. Not only is the Wu Tang Clan birthday, but yesterday was also the beginning of my budding relationship to my baby. Four years. Congratulations. Congratulations. And you know what? This is what the, great, the good part about it. Juices came back. He ain't hey, going out like that. Crib, nah, I'm not. When there you, you get go. to the crib, you got to get that, you gotta get that wine and play that come and talk to me for it. Oh, yeah. There you go. Hey, oh. look. Hey, look. I'll say this. Ain't no uh, wine sipping. There's nothing but <laughs> Henny tripping. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. Off top. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That go to show you right there. We appreciate you coming back and joining the vibe, man, because, you know, we couldn't go out on that note. Yeah. Oh, man, it's love, brother. You know what I'm saying? It's love. Right? You know what I'm saying? I appreciate y'all for having me. You know what I'm saying? And appreciate y'all giving me a format to push this, this, this good music out and talk that talk. You know what I mean? Hell yeah, definitely. And let them know once more. Let them know once more where they can find Juice at. You know what I'm saying? Where they can find you Juice know. at. 
Man, it's your man Richie Evans, a.k.a. Juice. You can find me on all the major platforms, Instagram, Tidal, Google, Spotify. And make sure you follow all my social sites at Who Is Richie. That's on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Get at me. I talk Everywhere. Back. You feel me? Everywhere across the globe. Your man is everywhere. Get it. Yo, I, don't need, I don't need Black Wall Street. I got my own laptop, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, that's my family. That's my family. You feel me? It's just time for you. Know, you know, I, you know. Hey, look, this we off the cuff radio. We like to say shit like that. We, you know what I'm saying? We off balance like that. We we politically incorrect. I love it though. Fuck it, I love it. <laughs> All right, one more we question before we go. Before, well, I gotta shoot one more question. And go ahead, I got this is for us basketball heads out there. We use a lot of basketball analogies out here. Who you think is going to take this? Go to State or Cleveland? I'm going to keep it all the way copacetic with you. Good question. I'm going to keep it all the way copacetic with you. This is not even going to – listen. I placed this bet prior, before the game yesterday. Go to State ain't playing no games with these boys. They're going to run them out the building ASAP. ASAP. Mm. They, they, ASAP with no delay. So you want, this, you this want a Cleveland? Cleveland? No, I'm not. Nah, he said go to state. state. Go to State. I know, go I, how did he come on, B? I I don't know, man. I, listen, I, I, look, I'm going to keep it all the way sincere. This is not going to be a long series. These boys is playing no game. This game this game on Sunday, running them out the building. C- Cleveland probably will get one at the house. I give them one at the house. But they going to sweep these. Now, they going to sweep them, but. This series is not going to be long. It's going to be a wrap. It's going to be a wrap. Tyree oh, might get, get off open. one night. Yo, don't you I understand that's one. classic? That's classic um, hey, NBA you, finals. Like, yo, a lot, of, a lot of champion teams do that. Really think of it. They don't actually get, like, the first game, maybe even the second game. You know what I mean? That's mind games. So they're not going to play too hard. In the first yeah. game, because, you know what I'm saying, they're going to reserve their energy. They're going to start turning yeah. up very soon. And yeah. everybody's going to be mad at LeBron. That's right. really be I real. Agree I agree. They're going to they gonna lose. LeBron going to, you know, again, I like LeBron. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. He's going to go back to the table. He probably going to try to get Melo from New York for next year. And they go, they 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 do what they do. But this year, oh no, they running them off the table. It's a wrap. Wrap. It's gonna be. <laughs> it shall be a good series. I hope it is. Yeah, I do. There see. you I, go. I, 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 we'll see. We'll see. Because these playoffs have just been horrible. I mean, every team just been wiped out. So we need to get at least a good. We need at least a good closure for a good season. I guess I agree with that. Yeah, you know this this season was very was this like one of the worst seasons ever in NBA history. Let's really be real. There's hardly any highlights, nothing. But you can't really blame the teams. Blame Stern. Yeah, well, Stern. Stein, God, is that what the still? fuck his last name is. He's the one that watered down basketball. The co- fucking commissioner. Silver's the worst. We need David Stern back. He brought us Allen Iverson. You know what I'm saying? Man. <laughs> yeah. But on that But anyways, note, you know we about to sign off and all that real quick. Yo, Juice. Hey, but look. Hey, I got one question that might turn into a request. Uh, what's your silver? Do do you freestyle your rhymes or any of them, or do you write them all down? How what is your style? It depends how my vibe is. You know what I'm saying. I mean, of course, I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm an artist, so you know what I'm saying. I mean, I've, you always gotta have that freestyle in the bag, but it just depends how the vibe is. You know what I'm saying. I so mean, what about right now? Because you got a ah, segment called a hot seat. Yeah, we got a segment called a hot seat. We got a segment called a hot seat. What's up? Come on. Like, you got something it's real nothing. quick? It could be written it's freestyle. Nothing. Let's go. Immediately. I got you. Want me, you want me right now? You got you want me just off the top? No. Yeah. yeah. No beat. Off just acapella. 
No holes barred. Gotta. Uh, I got a different DNA, though. I'm thorough nice. I was bred to be supreme. I'm pharaoh like I'm from the marrow of kings, queens, and hustlers. Had a dream to provide a need to these customers. Uh, became a savage in the game. Was a student, was influenced with the fluid in my veins. The top tier can never deal with a second seed. My legacy will forever bleed like Apollo Creed. I'm different than the mm. local guys. I spit that yeast on these beats. I'm supposed to rise. Stay in your lane in this game or get posterized. When you're finessed by the best, you're supposed to fly. My freshman mm-hmm. class was better than yours. It was Nipsey Hustle, K. Dot, and Kendrick Lamar. This ain't new boy. Shout out Abso, school boy. New Jersey Devil, Dave East. What it do, boy? That boy Richie Poppin. He not from Compton. But you know, hey, hey, I'm just freestyling for you, baby. Just a little something for you, daddy. Nothing too much. Uh, you feel me? <laughs> hey, we yeah. love it. Yeah. Give that man a round of applause. Yeah. yeah. All right, Al. And that's why it's called the juice, because it's balls on steroids. I'm on it, baby. I appreciate you. I'm on it, baby. I appreciate you. Hey, I appreciate you getting in that hot seat, because I love the hot seat. I think I look forward to it every show, but not everybody is willing, and not everybody can do it. But you did it flawlessly. I appreciate it, man. Come on, man. I told you, you when, when Kobe put the jersey on, I'm shooting the ball with no delay. Uh, my man, I appreciate y'all though, man. Like I said, I'm gonna make sure I stay tuned and locked in with y'all. Whenever I'm in y'all region, I'm gonna make sure I reach out. Everybody who tuned in, like I said, make sure you follow me at Who Is Richie and make sure you get that new record. Come and talk to me on all the major platforms. I appreciate y'all, man. Yeah. That's what it do, man. Right. And on that note, we about to sign up out of here. Sam, man, you have any shout outs you want to give out right quick? Man, I just want to give a shout out. So uh, everybody that's been following us for these the whole three years, Off the Cuff Radio been on the air. Give a shout out to Rhythm, Rhythmic Karma Radio. Give a shout out to my dude Mackenzie. He's going through his trials and tribulations right now. Shout outs to him. You know what I'm saying? Shout outs. Shout outs to everybody that just loves life and sticking pipe in the badass dike. That's what it's doing. Hey, you know, I want to shout out to my baby girl, Italia, that's been bearing with me every Friday. She be pissed off I'm on the radio. All my kids, hey, Juice, shout out to you. Appreciate you for coming on. All the guests that we Whoa. have, all the listeners that we have, all my dominating force people and, and, and my artists, everybody that just lets me do this show because they know I love it. And, and no matter how much time it takes for them, they let me do it. And shout out to y'all, my my host and my other co-hosts, Off the Cuff Radio, the Guillotine. Shout out to everybody listening. Shout out to everybody in Juicy Squad. Hey, shout out to everybody. You know I love everybody. I love the world. No matter how much y'all hate me, I love you too. And shout out to all the Dose Fresh and Don too, B. Last but not least, make sure y'all check out Intelligent Ignorance. That shit is out right now. We're going to get them on the show very soon. We have to make that shit happen. Go fresh Mm -hmm. to fucking Don, B. He killing it right now. But on this note, we be signing out for another night. Catch us next Friday night, baby. 9 p.m. Peace out, motherfucker.